So let's go into the gallery in Sydney, but we're gonna skip past all these nice sculptures and nice paintings and we're gonna go straight to the modern art. So this one is, I think, created by the indigenous people, but you can see the emotion and that's all it's got going for it. It's full of emotion, scribbled, slopped around paint with no focal point. This up here draws attention, this down here draws attention, and then all the high contrast near the edges is really bad too. But this one is a good example of just pure emotion and no design techniques. Let me take this into Photoshop and see what it looks like if we can crop into it and improve it with design techniques, skip past some of that emotion. So I'm gonna focus on this top part and then maybe... So if we crop it like that, we've got some focal points now, but it's still kind of a jumbled mess. It's, it's hard to improve this one. So let me go back to here and this is a um, detailed shot of the painting. So I also recommend if you're going into the museums and taking photos of the paintings, get a detailed shot, get the light reflecting off the paint strokes. I always find it interesting to look at their paint strokes and see how thick they are and see how they applied them. So this guy, he's full of emotion. It's a self-portrait and I don't think it's very good. There's no color harmony. There's no design techniques. There's nothing. It's 100% emotion, just like the other one. Uh, this one, it's a close-up. The only thing he's going for is it's a very large painting and he's going for the shock and awe value of, wow, look at all the paint I used. Like, this is a detailed shot of it, but the paint was super thick. But that's never gonna have longevity like a Van Gogh or a Da Vinci. Which is fine, it's good for him, it's good for people that enjoy it, but when I'm teaching art, when I'm creating something, I want to be visually clear with what I'm trying to communicate, but I also want it to have longevity, a long shelf life. I want people hundreds of years from now to enjoy it, not just the people that I'm living around right now. So this one was uh, pretty funny. It's going for that shock and awe value. It's got the Simpson, Lisa Simpson with watermelon and cigarettes, and then he's got cantaloupe there and I think that's probably chapstick. It's got no unity, it's got no visual clarity, obviously she's the center of attention, you squint your eyes and she's popping out and that violent yellow against the red is popping out but what's the story here? What is it? It makes zero sense and he's got a lot of high contrast near the edge. Yeah that one's pretty bad. If you new design at least you could create some unity and movement with some coincidences or an arabesque or something but this is all just plotted onto the canvas with no consideration other than trying to shock the viewer. And this is a, another big canvas. It's probably six foot by eight foot. It's a really big one. It's another detailed shot. This one's a small painting and it's really poorly done. Another one where you're just painting with your fingers or something. The design's horrible. The painting and the resemblance of whoever he's trying to paint is pretty bad. They're going for the shock and awe value of this thick paint. You can see how crazy thick it is. And then this is the edge of the canvas. It looks like the side of his palette or something like that. It's loaded with paint. And that's what they're going for. They're going for, look at how much paint I piled up and I have somewhat of an image there, but that's not gonna have longevity. It's another guy, Sidney Nolan is his name, I think. This is another poorly designed painting. There's no focal point. All of this is coinciding with this head and this draws attention away from the face. So does this palette. It's got radiating lines, but they're obvious and it's paint brushes and the color theory is really bad. So this one's all around pretty bad too. This is a detailed shot. This one's getting a little better. He's got figure ground relationship with this guy, but if you look close, he's got the background coinciding with the head, which is bad. It's kissing the background elements. The scale here is kind of wonky because the bird's huge, which means it's closer, it's more in focus. Over here on the left, he's got hardly any interest. He's got this little shack with some color, you know, yellow, red, and blue on there, but that's about it. That's creating interest on the left side. You could probably snip that whole piece off and maybe be better off. The balance is definitely too far on the right side. He's got this big element, this big element, and then the, the guy and zero interest on the left. Not to mention the gazing direction of the bird, which also draws attention to the right side. So that one's another bad one. There's a close up of the bird. This one's another one. If you split it in half, he's got two or three focal points. One's the face, 
got high contrast. You squint your eyes and you can see the eyes popping out. We've got high contrast in the distance. We've got a little aerial perspective. He's getting a little bit going on for him. He's got repetition in the posts and the trees. And then he's got this, looks like an underground area, but these long strips that look like flowers with weeds, they draw a lot of attention away from the focal point, the face up there. So if you cover up the top half, you can see that he's almost got two separate paintings here, but that's visual confusion. Where do you want the viewer to look? You want him to look down there? Do you want him to look up there? Or what's the main focal point? What's your story? What's going on here? So you gotta be clear with what your message is and use design techniques to communicate that. There's a detailed shot. So this one, he's actually got a couple design techniques and it stands out amongst his other two. And the one main design technique is the figure ground relationship. You can also squint and you can see the greatest area of contrast right on the face there. So he's, he's directing the viewer's eyes right where he wants it. He's also using a little bit of aerial perspective to show the distance and the depth of the composition. There's a detailed shot. I had to get that face because it looked pretty funny. It's another Aborigine, I think it's the indigenous artist of Australia, but this one is okay. They've got figure ground relationship and they also have repetition in these little circles, but they have a movement going around the composition, which is a nice thing to experience when you're looking at a painting. This one actually is not bad for an abstract painting. It's got movement, a lot of movement going from this big area of contrast down. And he's got some color theory here with the green, yellow, and red. But he's also got these big black spots, which draws attention to the bottom left, which isn't very good because it's offsetting the balance of the piece. If we cover that up, you cover that up with your thumb, you can see it shifts the weight a little bit more towards the right. Let's see the detailed shot. So he's got, this one's full of thick paint. So it's got a lot of emotion, but it also has a little bit of design techniques. Figure ground relationship. This mark is clearly defined against the solid white background. This one reminded me of a Peter Bruegel painting and I'll put it up there on the screen. But all the repetition he creates with all these little spots, plus the posts in the ground, and then they're clearly defined against the light background. And then he's got a horizon line so we've got a sense of depth, we've got repetition, and there's a little bit of movement created with this paint mark here at the bottom, and then these faded marks here in the background paint, almost like a circular movement going this way. So he's almost got an ellipse there in the center that's hidden, which is good. This one is the detailed shot of all these splotches. This guy, he actually incorporates dynamic symmetry. This one is, I believe it's a root. Let me open this up real quick. But I believe it's a root too, yeah. So I already overlaid the dynamic symmetry grid on there. He's got this locked into the root two rectangle and you can see how this branch locks into that reciprocal. This is locked into the sinister diagonal and then this one's locked into the reciprocal. And then if I turn this off, you can see this elliptical shape going around here. So this is the foreground right here, this little arc, this swinging arc and arabesque, but it's also unified with the background with this branch in the background, which is a very nice design technique. Let me go back over here. I'm gonna show you a detailed shot. But uh, that's it for today, guys. Apply your emotions, but also incorporate the design techniques and the composition techniques. You wanna be inspired by something and be like, oh, I wanna, I wanna paint that, I wanna take a picture of that, I wanna draw that. That's the emotion you need to start a piece of art. But you don't wanna just like splatter paint. You don't wanna just scribble violently onto your page and expect to create something remarkable. You need design techniques, you need composition, you need gestalt psychology principles. You need all that stuff to communicate clearly to the viewer what you are creating. So let me know if you guys like this stuff. I really appreciate all the nice comments and the likes and the views and everything's helping me get more videos to you and more lessons. So I really, really appreciate it. If you don't understand something, reach out to me. I'll do a video on it, okay? If I get enough requests of something, I'm gonna do a video on it and help you guys see clearly and understand this stuff because it needs to get out there. So thank you very much, you guys. I appreciate you all. Take care.